in a prior video, I sort of challenged the idea of muscle origins and insertions and suggested that instead we should ask about what's the quality of relationship of muscle tissue to other tissues over 100% of its surface. Well, this is a follow-up video to describe a number of different ways that muscle tissue relates to other tissues in the body. So, number one, muscle tissue can relate directly to bone. So, the fibers, the little proteinaceous uh, fibers of muscle tissue can actually root directly onto the bone. Um, that's the way it is in the case of, say, tibialis anterior to the tibia in its upper portion. So, muscle fiber directly to bone. Number two, we can have a muscle fiber relating to tendinous matter and then to bone. So, muscle to tendon. So, the muscle fibers of any given muscle can sometimes, well, depends, but sometimes sort of peter out until all the fascia that was within the muscle and around the muscle forms a cord-like material or even a sheet, which we call an aponeurosis. And those cords and sheets can then directly relate to the bone or sometimes to neighboring muscle tissue. So muscle to tendon. <clears throat> to bone. Number three, muscle can relate to other muscle tissue or to bone via what I call perifascia. So muscle relates through perifascia uh, to muscle or bone. So what's perifascia? Perifascia, I go on and on about it in other videos about this. But perifascia is basically a membranous, a slippery, wet kind of fascia that enables there to be differential movement between what's on either side of it. So if we have muscle tissue, not at its origin and insertion, but say along its belly, how does it relate to its neighboring tissues? Oftentimes it's relating through perifascia. So we have muscle tissue, muscle tissue with a membrane in between them. So this one can contract and move relative to this one contracting and moving. We have differential movement by a perifascia. I would say that's the majority relationship of muscle tissue to anything. Perifascia is ubiquitous throughout the musculoskeletal system enabling differential movement. So Perifascia doesn't get the time of day in the origin and insertion model, and yet it's a structural element. It's essential to the movement of the muscle tissue, and uh, here we are accounting for it now. So number four, we have muscle relating to other muscle tissue via a septum. Now what's a septum? A septum is kind of a fibrous compartmentalization of the musculoskeletal system. So instead of being a slippery membrane, as we find in the case of perifascia between muscle and muscle or muscle and bone, we have uh, muscle relating, that's a sloppy M, muscle relating through a septum, all right, to other muscle or to bone. So muscle via a septum, uh, or septa in the plural, is a very fibrous matter. It's not slippery at all. It's an anchor. So the muscle fibers can go directly into that septum and you'll have two different named muscles yanking on the same septum for leverage. So muscle via septum to muscle or bone as opposed to muscle via perifascia to muscle or bone. Now, we also have, <laughs> this is one of my favorites here. Okay, so muscle, relating to viscera. Now, what, do I, what are you talking about, Gil? The, the viscera is this pile of guts inside your belly, right? Well, uh, they're inside your whole visceral uh, cavities, but they're also kind of reaching out to the periphery, right? So your, your heart doesn't stay in your chest. Your heart is a whole body organ. It extends to your fingertips. Your, your brain is non-local to your head, right? In the sense that it's, it's nervous tissue of the central nervous system continues out into the peripheral nervous system and is everywhere throughout your body, including uh, supplying every named muscle in your body. So whether it be your heart supplying or draining blood from and to the muscle, or whether it be your, your brain, uh, right, uh, supply, giving a nerve supply, motor supply, or, or sensory supply uh, throughout your body, um, you can say that each muscle uh, of your body, your biceps, your pec major, what have you, 
has guts, okay? And its guts are its nerve supply and its visceral supply. And you can cut with a knife every, every one of these relationships, number one through four, of any given muscle, and it doesn't come off the body. Why doesn't it come off the body? It doesn't come off the body because it's connected to the nerve system and, and the vascular system, right? So this is a very important thing to know because it's actually this, a structural element of the muscle tissue, right? The tree of life within it, the nerve tree and the vascular tree within the muscle that's anchored inside your chest and inside your head. So we, we don't want to forget that because the, the movement of the muscle is, is part of its relationship to the movement of the viscera and vice versa. So there we go, one, two, three, four, five different ways that muscle tissue relates to what's around it. So you could learn about any given muscle whether, which one of these types of relationships, and sometimes all of these types of relationships, are native to that particular muscle, not just its origin and its insertion. So there you have it, a slightly more sophisticated accounting beyond the origin insertion model for the ways in which uh, muscle tissue relates to other tissues and the quality of those relationships. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your watching. Thanks for studying with me. If you'd like to learn more, visit me at gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.